Edinburgh has one of the largest collections of artwork in Scotland. Much of it contained in the National Portrait Gallery and the Scottish National Gallery. But look a bit further and there are some wonderful treasures to be found. Travelling west along Edinburgh's busy ferry road, you pass Inverleith Row. Just a short distance down this road stands St James Episcopal Church Golden Acre, an unassuming red sandstone building standing back from the road. Within is a treasure trove of artwork, largely by the hand of William Hole, a member of St James Church, who volunteered to decorate the church at no charge. Hole is best known for his newly restored frieze at the National Portrait Gallery representing figures from Scottish history, but it is little known that he got the commission for this work after producing the frescoes at St James. Like his contemporary Phoebe Anna Traquair, William Hole's work was influential in the Scottish arts and crafts movement. Within St James there is a collection of fine artwork, including the figure of the Good Shepherd, sculpted by Charles Pilkington Jackson. There is also a magnificent east window, depicting the gospel story of the life of Christ. However, the centrepiece is certainly the frescoes around the chancel, where every conceivable wall space is adorned by the gifted hand of William Hull. He inscribed the words of the Te Deum in gold script around the circumference of the church interior, just above the dado. Additionally, he stenciled many of the wall panels. Above the high altar, there is a golden triptych with the panels painted, again by his hand, portraying Christ seated in glory in the centre, with St Stephen, the first martyr, featured in the left-hand panel and St George, portrayed on the right. On the south wall of the chancel, above the Te Deum script, is a pictorial procession of over 30 life-size figures whose faces are turned towards the high altar. Starting from the left are ten of the apostles, headed by St Paul. Various figures in the procession are recognisable by the emblems associated with them. For example, behind St Paul, is the figure of St Peter with keys hanging from his belt, and behind is St Andrew with the saltire emblem on his robes. Further along is St James the Less with a symbol of a shell on his shoulder. Following behind the apostles are the martyrs headed by St Stephen, seen here in deacon's robes and guiding two holy innocents. Behind St Stephen are figures of St Isidore holding a long sickle, he was a layman or farm labourer. A delightful legend mentions that his employer saw a second team of oxen being led by an angel alongside Isidore. He often lingered in church and was thus accused of being late for work. Then comes St Christopher, carrying a staff, who struggled to carry a child across the river. No wonder, said the child, who was Christ. You have been carrying the whole world. Since the Reformation, St Christopher's cult became popular with travellers. Following is St Lawrence, holding a gridiron. He refused to hand over the church's almsgivings. Legend has it that he was martyred on a gridiron. Then follows St Sebastian, carrying arrows, who was martyred by arrow shots. The emblem of an arrow was popular as a subject in the art of the Renaissance period. Next, we see St George, a stalwart figure in his knight's armour. St Agnes, kneeling by a lamb and holding the hand of St Lucia, was little more than a child of 13 years of age. She consecrated her maidenhood to Christ, having refused to consider marriage. St Cecilia, carrying a portable organ, sang to God in her heart at her wedding, while the organs were playing, the words being, May my heart remain unsullied, so that I be not confounded. St Catherine, holding a broken wheel, refused to deny her Christian faith. Sentenced to be martyred on a spiked wheel, St Catherine was unhurt after the wheel shattered to pieces. 
In the end, she was beheaded. The Holy Church is represented by a group symbolic of its Catholicity. This included bishops vested in robes of the Eastern, Western and African churches, also a priest and a deacon, a friar and a nun. As was often done in like circumstances by the old Italian artists, William Hole introduced several portraits representing contemporary people. In this case, it was representatives of the Scottish Episcopal Church at the time of the consecration of St James. Examples can be seen by way of the kneeling figure of John Dowden, Bishop of Edinburgh, who opened and consecrated this church. In front of him is a chorister holding an incense burner. He is believed to be the then verger's son. Behind the bishop is Dean Montgomery, carrying a chalice. Between the bishop and the dean is the youthful figure of the Reverend Charles Jenkins, who succeeded the Reverend Jacob Simmons, the first rector of St James. Interestingly, Charles Jenkins is the great-grandfather of Richard Branson. Mr Simmons can be seen in the face of St Jude, looking out from between St Isidore and St Christopher in the apostolic group. Looking at the figure beside the kneeling bishop, could this be a modest self-portrait of William Hole himself? Pictured above the apostles and martyrs are four cathedrals. Starting from the left, St Mark's Venice of Basilican architecture, St Francis of Assisi of Romanesque architecture, St Paul's London of Baroque architecture and St Mary's Episcopal Edinburgh of Neo-Gothic architecture. Each cathedral is fronted by the gates to New Jerusalem through which the waters of salvation are flowing out to water the earth. On the left above the cathedrals is the Archangel Gabriel holding a lily representing purity. Gabriel brought the message to the Virgin Mary that she would be the mother of our Lord. Next is Agony, holding a chalice. Then, Resurrection, holding a trumpet. Next to the chancel arch is a benign-looking death, carrying a child. Death is also carrying some ripe grain and a sickle. His wings are of a rosy hue, suggesting blessed life beyond the tomb. He is seen leading a maiden in spotless robes. The corbels on which these archangels stand are small figures of evil aspect, representing sin, death and the grave. On both sides of the chancel, below the Te Deum script, the dado is filled with a well-ordered design of vines and peacocks. These represent symbols of immortality as depicted in paintings by the early Christians in the catacombs. Noticing that the peacock's heads face alternate ways, something must have distracted the peacock on the second row down next to the chancel door. High above the choir stalls on the north side are the four evangelists who wrote the Holy Gospels witnessing to the life, death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Each of the evangelists is accompanied by a figure symbolising the opening theme of their particular gospel. St Matthew the tax collector who followed Jesus. He is with a winged man, symbolising the human genealogy of Christ. St Mark, whose gospel draws on the Apostle Peter's account. He is with a winged lion, symbolising the power of the evangelist's words. St Luke, the historian, who also wrote the book of Acts. He is with the winged ox or bull, symbolising the sacrifice in the temple. St John, who also wrote the book of Revelation. He is with a winged eagle, symbolising higher theology soaring above. 
To their right is St Michael, the principal fighter against the devil. Here, he is seen slaying a dragon. Besides these figures is the dove representing God, the Holy Spirit, inspirer of prophets, priests and kings, and helper of all believers. Lower down, immediately above the dado, are figures representing Moses, who brought God's people the law, King David, who was the greatest king of Israel. Also, the boy Samuel, who would become priest and judge of Israel. The young Daniel, who would lead God's people after they had become enslaved in Babylon. Elijah, who challenged false worship in Israel. Isaiah, who prophesied about Christ's death and resurrection. Jeremiah, whose prophecy Jesus brought to fulfilment on the night before his crucifixion. Jesus said, This is the new covenant, sealed in my blood. Malachi, the prophet who would foretell the coming of John the Baptist and Christ. Finally, John the Baptist, who heralded Christ's arrival and baptised him in the River Jordan. On the extreme right is the figure of St James, the patron saint of this church. Here he is holding a small model of St James' church, complete with the intended steeple. This was never completed due to financial constraints. There is a brass memorial plate to William Hull by the vestry door. There is also a small plaque to the left of the high altar, which reads, This work, however small, was dedicated ad maiorem Dei Gloriam, in honorum Sancti Jacobi, Gilelmus Hall, Auctor et Pictor, David Dahl, in orator. To complete the journey of our Lord, which began as illustrated in the east window, there is one glorious chapter left to be witnessed. Above the chancel arch, on the sanctuary side, is a scene of angels and other figures looking at the empty tomb after the resurrection of our Lord. This is complemented by a text, also from the Te Deum, which reads, When thou hadst to overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. We hope that you have enjoyed this video of William Hall's artistic masterpiece. If you would like to find out more about it, then please make contact through the details in the description below. Thank you.